Hello, I'm Mick Jones um, and you've joined me today at Dancers End Nature Reserve where I've been the volunteer warden for quite a few years. I'm going to show you probably the most interesting part of the reserve. We're going to go through some of the woodland sections and then to an open area in the centre which is certainly the richest part of the reserve. Dancers End Nature Reserve is the largest of the Wildlife Trust reserves in Buckinghamshire. It's also the oldest. It was established by the Rothschild family in 1941 as a commemoration to Charles Rothschild, who was the founder of the Wildlife Trust movement. The two areas of woodland, one of which we're standing in now, were clear felled during the Second World War and then they were replanted by the Forestry Commission in the 1950s and a lot of conifers were present as a nurse crop to the deciduous trees. So for many years it wasn't really terribly interesting for a lot of the insect life. Now as you can see we've taken a lot of the conifers out and it's got these lovely wide rides with lots of brambles along the side and on a good day they're full of clouds of butterflies at this time of the year. It's a little bit dull today, but we'll see what we can find as we walk around. We're just leaving the uh, area of woodland and uh, over on that side is still all ancient woodland. Uh, it's had woodland cover from around 1600. You can see an old hollow way running down. This is one of the main footpaths through the reserve. It was worn down by horses over many, many years, um, taking timber out and also bringing lime up to the tops of uh, the hills here to sweeten the fields that were all heathland then, back then. One of the interesting things is uh, that the central area of the reserve was much more open back in the 1800s and we've got old maps that we've now checked uh, that show that the area we're just going to walk into was much more open. So since Bebout got involved with the reserve we've been trying to reopen it so that we get all the special uh, insects and plants that were associated with grassland and woodland edge and that's what we're going to see next. This is one of the areas we've uh, thinned and opened up uh, relatively recently within the last uh, 18 months to two years. And you can see we've taken a lot of the mature ash trees out, we've taken a few beech trees out, so lots of lights coming into an area that was heavily shaded for many, many years. So it's suiting a lot of the uh, woodland edge plants that we want to see more of. It's creating new habitat for butterflies to, uh, to, to make use of and other insects. And we're going to walk further down the slope and see one of the rare plants that we have on the reserve which is going to benefit from this kind of management. The next belt of land as we uh, carry on going downhill is really being managed as what we call a scrub mosaic, keeping lots of scrub which is cut on a rotation and then a network of paths running through with grassy clearings. And so this suits uh, nesting birds in the scrub, some of our specialist butterflies like this kind of dappled shade, but along the edges of the paths lots and lots of fantastic chalk grassland flowers like this uh, common spotted orchid and bird's foot trefoil here, the food plant of our blue butterflies and hedge bed straw, the lovely white plant here that is like sort of clouds along the edge of the scrub.
I call this the best bench in Buckinghamshire. Not only have you got a fantastic view over towards Ivinghoe Beacon and Pitstone Hill, but sitting here a few weeks ago at the early part of summer, you could probably see four or five species of our special orchids and also some of our specialist butterflies like green hair streak. This is the chalk grassland scrub mosaic that is such an important habitat on the reserve and something we want to maintain with lots of volunteer effort. This transition zone between the woodland areas and scrubby areas and the open grassland um, is particularly rich. It's a bit like the seashore where you've got different conditions uh, as the tide comes in and out and you end up, it ends up being one of the richest areas for both plants and insects. And here we've got a plant that uh, is prolific across the reserve but it's normally a woodland and woodland edge uh, species and it's kind of broken out into the scrubby edges. This is nettle leaf bellflower. It looks like a nettle, but don't worry, it won't sting you. Another one is the common valerian, which provides a sort of platform for lots of our insects to land on and nectar. This is probably one of the richest areas of the reserve sharing the features of the grassland and the woodland. So finally we reached the open chalk grassland part of the nature reserve and it was really this area that prompted Miriam Rothschild to uh, help to set up the reserve and then start the management work because this was all getting badly scrubbed over and the rare plants that she wanted to uh, maintain here were just getting smothered, in particular Chilton gentians. They're a flower that will be out later in the summer um, but you can see the richness of this old chalk grassland this has probably been grazed off and on for hundreds of years. There are times when it's been let, let go and scrubbed over and then been brought back again. Uh, in one square meter, there can be up to 36 or 37 species of plants. At the moment, we've got quite a lot of these uh, pyramidal orchids. And here, just in this little patch, you can see birds for trefoil, agrimony, the bed straw, hawkweeds and hawkbits, wild basil, marjoram, knapweed, it's endless and this is just perfect for a lot of our butterflies and other insects. There's lots more to the reserve to see, we've only just looked at the central uh, area of the reserve. Elsewhere there are different sorts of woodland areas with some uh, dense beech woods, open coppice style woodland and scrubby belts all over the valley and there's even an area of ex-arable fields that we're returning to chalk grassland. So come and explore and find out just what this place has to offer for yourself.